Ciao Bella! Welcome to Bella Uncinetto and another episode of Reading with Bella. Hopefully you have a nice drink, whether it's warm or cold, and you're ready to get started. Remember, we are reading from my book of Lewis Carroll writings. It says Jabberwocky on the front, but that's not the only thing that's in here. Right now we are on useful and instructive poetry. Uh, and of course with Lewis, Lewis Carroll, it always has uh, an interesting bent, right? So uh, most of these poems in this section have a moral at the end. So uh, I will read that after I read the poem. Uh, and I am in the car today because it's the only place that I could get some, some peace. So you may hear some traffic, but it's not really loud. Uh, but it's the only place that I could have some quiet to do this today. All right. So I hope you're ready to get started. Melodies. Part one. There was an old farmer of Riedel who made holes in his face with a needle. They went far deeper in than to pierce through the skin, and it's strange to say he was made beetle. Two. There was an eccentric old draper who wore a hat made of brown paper. It went up to a point and it looked out of joint, the cause of which he said was vapor. Part three. There once there was once a young man of Oporta, who daily got shorter and shorter. The reason, he said, was the hod on his head, which was filled with the heaviest mortar. His sister, named Lucio Finer, grew constantly thinner and thinner. The reason was plain she slept out in the rain, was never allowed any dinner. Hmm. There was no moral at the end of that one. But I can see how they were kind of melodic in nature. Next we have A Tale of a Tale. An aged gardener gooseberries picked from off a gooseberry tree. The thorns they oft his fingers pricked, yet never a word, said he. A dog sat by him with a tail. Oh, such a tail. I ween that never such in hill or dale hath hitherto been seen. It was a tail of desperate length, a tail of grisly fur, a tail of muscle, bone, and strength, unmet for such a cur. Yet of this tail the dog seemed proud, and ever and anon he raised his head and barked so loud that though the man seemed something cowed, yet still his work went on. At length, in lashing out its tail, it twisted it so tight. Around his legs, t'was no avail to pull with all its might. The gardener scarce could make a guess what round his legs had got. Yet he worked on in weariness, although his wrath was hot. Why, what's the matter, he did say, I can't keep on my feet. Yet not a glass I've had this day, save one of brandy neat. Two quarts of ale and one good sup of whiskey sweet and strong. And yet I scarce can now stand up. I fear that something's wrong. His work reluctantly he stopped, the cause of this to view. Then quickly seized an axe and chopped the guilty tail in two. When this was done, with mirth he bowed till he was black and blue. The dog it bark barked both long and loud, and with good reason too. Moral. Don't get drunk. Interesting. All right. Next we have brother and sister. Sister, sister, go to bed. Go and west rest. <laughs> We're going to start that one over. Brother and sister. Sister, sister, go to bed. Go and rest your weary head. Thus the prudent brother said, Do you want a battered hide or scratches to your face applied? Thus the sister calm replied, Sister, do not rouse my wrath. I'd make you into a mutton broth as easily as kill a moth. The sister raised her beaming eye and looked at him indignantly and sternly answered, Only try. 
Off to the cook he quickly ran. Dear cook, pray lend a frying pan to me as quickly as you can. And wherefore should I give it to you? The reason cook is plain to view. I wish to make an Irish stew. What is what meat is in that stew to go? My sister will be the contents. Oh, will you lend the pan cook? No. Moral. Never stew your sister. Hmm. The Trial of a Traitor There was a strange being into the north, and oh, he was strange to see. His chin was as broad as the Firth of Forth, and deep as the Zunder Zee. Knee did his chin conceal his knees, knee did it show his waist. Eek was it like a peck of peas, and human skin encased. The neighbors oft had viewed his chin with admiration mute. Soothly they said we will begin this man to prosecute. Who knows but that this chin may hide a sword or pike or gun. Perhaps the government, they cried, he'll murder one by one. His warrant duly was enrolled, his body ye shall seize, and in safe custody shall hold till further notices. The constables, a grimly pair, marched on their mission fell. They took their victim by the hair and dragged him to his cell. The lifelong knight upon the stones and fetters was he lain. Willem his sighs and eke his moans betoken grief and pain. The morrow morn the magistrate granted an interview. His hair was short, though very straight. Toward the skies it grew. The magistrate, he raised his hand. He from his seat he stirred. Aside, said he, I prithee stand. Anon thou shalt be heard. Soothly, he said, and that will I for certes am I weird. He sunk into a chair hard by and rubbed his frizzled beard. The evidence was fairly tried. The jury left the dock upon their verdict to decide. The key turned in the lock. Not guilty, the judge forward bent, his hair of eighty frosts. You see the prisoner's innocent, so you must pay the cost. Moral, pay the costs. I hope you've enjoyed these poems, and I hope that you continue to come and listen to me read. I love reading these poems. They're so much fun. And like I've said before, if you have thoughts on any of the poems and you would like to share those with me, I'd love to hear them. If you have questions, um, I will do my best to answer them. And until next time, be the change you wish to see in the world, everyone. Ciao, Bella.